Oh, got it. <laughs> yes. So in the last video, I removed the um, transfer case front output housing from my uh, 2004 Discovery to put it in the 2003. And man, I got really freaking frustrated in that video trying to pull that thing off. And I realized I made some mistakes. The biggest mistake I made was when pulling that nose cone off, the high-low shift fork is a really tight tolerance. And you have to slide the housing off of that fork or that, that rod. And I was hung up on that rod and I didn't realize it because I was underneath the vehicle. So you really, it helps to have a second set of eyes when doing that. And so that is what I learned from that experience because later when I took the front housing off of this 2003, I didn't have that problem at all because I had somebody up there looking at it and I could position that front nose housing in such a way that I got it to clear that rod. And once it cleared the rod, then I could shimmy it off and shimmy it off without pulling that whole gear set out. So that's a big lesson learned. So I, unlike the other video, I said that I was going to remove the um, transfer case to do it. I ended up not doing that once I kind of realized my mistake. So it's in. I have the, the, the housing in. The CDL works great. I've got the, the shifter. Everything works. And you'll see in this video how I got to that point. And this video kind of really should be the only video. The other one's more or less me just being frustrated trying to trying to remove that housing without knowing what the hell I was doing or having a second set of eyes. But really there are three components to doing this job. There's the removal. Well, most of the time you're probably gonna have a housing. You're not gonna be removing two housings, but you have to remove the 2003 nose cone and reinstall the nose cone. And note that you are not replacing that gear set. You leave that gear set that you have in your transfer case, you leave it there. You're only replacing the housing and the housing has the guts and the internals for engaging and disengaging the diff lock. So that's the number one component that the 2003 is missing. The second thing you're doing is you're adding the shifter to be able to shift in and out of um, the diff lock in and out. That's the second component. And then the third component is wiring up the dash light so that you know when your diff lock is engaged or not engaged. Those are really the three things that you have to deal with. So in this video, you'll see a much more successful removal of that nose cone and a successful installation of the 2004. Although I did run into a problem when I got the 2004 uh, nose cone off. I found that it was full of metal, pieces of metal, and the bearing, the uh, front output bearing that was in that one just like came apart. So. I ended up having to put a new front output bearing on, which wasn't too bad and was able to do it without a press, as you'll see in the video. Got the drive shaft out. I got the transfer case drained. Got the mount out. Now that I learned from the last video that that has to happen first. And it's really nice to work on a lifted truck because no jack stands. And you don't have to worry about the thing falling down on you. Please forgive the barking dog. Now looking inside here, this is what I'm going to do differently. Get a little light down here so you can see. You can see that pin right there is what gave me most of the trouble last time. And that's just about, I don't know, that's about an inch and a half, two inches. I need this thing to slide straight forward, right? And then here is where we run into the transmission. But looking at that, I have an inch to two inches easily there. So I should be able to get this thing off straight. I think my pin, the problem is that pin's going to want to pull out. So I got to weasel this. I might need a second person to help me hold the gear set in so the pin doesn't slide out. But this will clear that now that I'm looking at it. I'm going to pull these two 10 mil bolts off that inspection panel too because they get in the way. And of course I'm going to take that transmission bolt off to the transmission pan bolt and we'll give this another shot i think i'm gonna be able to get this off cleanly in uh, one 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 try well not one try but 
without pry bars, hopefully. That's my goal, no pry bars. We'll see. Ow. Dust in the eye. Ow. It's like deja vu all over again. I've got all the bolts out of the casing now. Got the mount off. Uh, yeah, it's just sitting there right now, held on by the factory transfer case seal. Just kind of glued in there a little bit. Uh, still leaking fluid though, which is pretty annoying. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna break the housing loose and let the rest of that fluid pour out. And I'm gonna eat lunch while it does that. So now I'm going to try to remove this thing as gently as I can. Gentle, gentle. Hopefully not involving any pry bars. Hopefully without the gear set coming out. We don't want the gear set sliding out. That's the key to this whole operation. Once the gear set starts sliding out, that's when we have problems. So I'm gonna lift up and forward as gently as I can. Oh wow. Okay. Gear set still in there. Seal brake going on there. I am hitting the transmission. Alright. So far, so good. Now, I want to get my ratchet extension put in here so that I don't allow that gear set to slide out. brake line is in the way. I'm gonna bungee the brake line up out of the way. Well, that was wrong. This will involve some pry bar usage, but uh, I'm in that same situation again here. what I just did so you can see it's coming out here the screen come on it's coming out but this time the gear set is not coming out and that's a good thing we want the gear set to just stay put over here we are butt up against the transmission fortunately I can move it yeah this thing's about to come out but I want to show the crucial aspect of the whole the whole reason this worked The whole reason this worked this time way more easily let me get my light on here is because that shift fork right there that sucker i got that to slide off real carefully uh first that slid off first so then this whole gear set body is just staying put oh that's such a relief so i think what I was, and I still am bound up against the transmission, but I have just enough room to move. So what I think I did wrong on the 2004 in that last video, I didn't realize that this was bound up and I was just working against it. And then it pulled the whole gear set with it. And that's when things just went downhill. So this time the gear set is in place because I slid it off that fork first. Time to hopefully get this out. Oh, here we go. Pry off the 
body of the gear set. Oh, got it. <laughs> yes. So close. So close. <laughs> yeah! Oh! Did I kill my O2 sensor wiring? Eee. No. It's fine. There you have it, folks. <laughs> That's how you get it out. Thought it'd be cool to take a look at the differences between these two housings. So this housing is the one without the CDL. This is the 2003. So if you look down in here, down in here, there's just nothing there. Nothing. Up here, there's nothing. Inside of here, it, it looks similar, but when you come over here, you can really see the difference. So where that one just has an empty void, you have this pin here, and that's where that ties in over here to the linkage. Where's the linkage? Um, over here, sorry. Ties into that linkage and that moves that dog clutch up and down. Which, let's see if I can show it here. There it goes. And that engages and disengages. You can see the pin popping up and down. So, whoever it was, I decided not to put that in. I cursed your name a few times while I was under my Land Rover. I was cleaning it. I was finding <laughs> metal chunks coming out of it. You can see down, I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's metal chunks down in there. What I think has happened is the uh, out. Oh yeah, there's a good one. I think this uh, output bearing is just disintegrating. So it's a good thing I didn't rush to put this on because now I'm gonna have to swap. Or I'm gonna have to put in a new bearing at least. If not, swap out my old one, my old shaft as well. Because I think they are the same. Oh, no, they're not. They're not the same, so I can't do that. So it's just a bearing. I think I'm going to have to buy a bearing and figure out how that goes in. Pretty shut down for this day. Instructions that I resurrected from the internet. But everybody links to these directions, but they are gone. All the links are dead. But I managed to find them on uh, the Wayback Machine. And I've posted them in at least one forum. If you need these, um, let me know in the comments below and I can post a link to this. It's kind of helpful, but it's not, it's kind of misleading too. But when it comes to the wiring, it's, it's very helpful. So I've done this. Basically what you've got to do is create a ground. And I've done that down here. You can really see that little yellow wire down there. It's just a body ground. That's all it is. So I've created that body ground. And then there's a wire on here on this harness that you have to tap into and you can see i haven't i'm just i'm just testing it i just tapped into this wire it's a blue and black wire it's number seven on this connector so you tap into that wire so you've got you've got this side and then you got a ground and then what i've done here is i've just stuck those into the diff lock switch because I, I have the diff lock switch off because i'm rebuilding the whole well, I'm not rebuilding. I'm just putting a new bearing in it, and I'm cleaning up all of the uh, all of the inside, just making it nice before I put it on. But I'm waiting for a bearing to come in the mail from Rock Auto. So anyway, I wanted to show you how this works. Go over here to the other side of the truck. So we get in here. Just turn on the ignition. Let all the lights do their blinking and bigging. Get the radio going here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna push this little button in, like that. I think 
that switch is a little, and there's the diff lock indicator. Now if I let go of the switch, it turns off, turns on, turns off. So that switch, this goes inside the transfer case. So I'll have to run these wires down here, you know, into the transfer case once I set it all up. But it's nice to be able to have that out because you can actually test it and make sure that it works. It feels like the first time I hit that switch it didn't work, but I mean, I really probably should just buy a new switch, but I'm working with what I got here. So I don't have a I don't have a press, but I need to put a bearing inside of this housing. So we're going to heat this bad boy up to 215 degrees so that we can get a bearing inside of here. And I'm going to put it in my oven right now and bake it. Don't tell my wife. The other side of this is we got a bearing and the bearing is over here. And they're freezing. Under the ice cream. So the bearing is freezing. Ooh, it's very cold. So once Transfer case nose cone gets hot, bearing is cold, and then we're going to tap that in with a piece of PVC pipe. We'll see how it goes. One transfer case nose cone. Look out, it's hot. Going through. All right. I'm going to set this here. That is super duper hot. Bearing is super duper cold. Oh, it stinks. It does not smell good. All right. You gotta get a little bit of gear oil on this. Before we do this, this is my little gear oil. Yeah. Tiny bit. That, that's a lot. That's, that's plenty. <laughs> Promise not it's gonna leak while I'm doing this. Oh, crap. <laughs> Put that over there. All right, so I just need to get a little lubage. Ooh, that's cold. I wasn't sure if that was gonna be hot or cold. It's cold. A little of that on the bearing. Can't touch that because it's going to be very, very hot. I got a piece of PVC pipe here. Center that up. Oh wow. It's oh. practically falling in on its own. The hot and cold is working. This. So we whack it flat. Fell in. There that we go. go. That's really good. Got the uh, nose cone rebuilt. I had to put a new bearing. New bearing for the uh, output. But bearing had fallen apart. So I took the whole dog clutch mechanism and everything out and washed all the metal shavings and pieces and parts out of there and put everything back together after putting the bearing in. Got all my switches on here, wired and tested this CDL switch. There are two of them. I'm only gonna use the one. Um, so yeah, this thing is ready to uh, get put back in to the 2003. One thing to note before I put this in is I'm engaging the diff lock. Because inside of here, when the diff lock is engaged, these, that dog clutch, um, I don't know how to explain it, it just kind of firmly pulls together. Whereas if the diff lock is disengaged, this guy's flopping around. So I'm hoping because the diff lock is engaged that the gears that this has to go around, it'll be, a, it'll be less of a battle because this ring's not flopping around. Now back underneath the truck, here is what the gear set looks like. I've cleaned up the gasket surface. So what I'm gonna have to do next is put RTV all around that nice shiny silver surface. And I've got about probably a good two to three hours to work with that RTV before it sets up. So hopefully this doesn't take me that long to put on. 
And obviously the reason I'm going to put it on here instead of putting it on the, the nose housing is because I've got to work that housing up through the exhaust and I'm going to be handling it. I don't want that RTV getting smeared and smudged everywhere. So I'm going to put it, the RTV on, on here instead. That way it's not getting messed up. So I'm going to explain one other part of this too. I have to get this thing aligned perfectly to get that shifter pin in first. And then that's going to allow me to line up the uh, output shaft into here and those dog clutch gears onto this outer this outer gear and to do that I need a second set of eyes so I'm waiting for my wife to come home so that she can look down from the top up there and tell me if that pin is lining up with the hole because it's a very tight fit and if that doesn't line up right then nothing will go right so that is I think that's the key to this whole this whole job is getting that pin carefully lined up correctly and then I, I would imagine I'm gonna have a fight trying to get the gears the output shaft to slide in and lined up with those splines while the outside lines up with these splines of this larger gear is it in yeah but I'm just not yeah. oh come on baby good news I've got it on there but now there's this, like this little bit to go where the gears all have to mesh up just right which I knew was going to be the most challenging part of this oh it's catching something's catching oh I think I got it Got an awesome sunset going on out here. Pretty cool. So anyway, we got the uh, the housing in. Uh, got the housing in. So here we are. Put the drive shaft on. All the underneath stuff is done, except I haven't put the uh, the uh, oil back in the uh, transfer case yet. I'm not going to do that until tomorrow. I want that RTV set up and spend my night putting this back together. So the next thing to do here, I think, is to put the housing, the high-low housing, back on. I'm going to get a little RTV, RTV that up, and put that housing back on. So I made a lot of progress last night, but I ran out of GoPro battery, daylight, and steam. So here we are the next day. Got all the center console stuff back together. I haven't fully mounted this black plate because I wanted to make sure everything was working properly. But happy to report that we have high-low. High-low working. And there we go, cool. And then we have uh, center diff lock working. Here's a little pro tip. When you fill up your transfer case or your diffs, just use a bug sprayer and you just pump it up. Stick the, well, you gotta get a clear hose like this, but you just pump it up, stick it on there and just wait. And it does all the work for you instead of using one of those stupid hand pumps.